Roland, there he is. He's okay. moving to the left there. Okay. He's okay. going to the left. I see him. Okay, right there. Yep, there That's he it. is. Right there. Okay. Yep. He got it. He got, got it. it. He's got it. Two right to him. Two right to him. Another, another visual action. Just make a little flip pass that pipe. And boy, he hit it. Right you know, right we've lost our cow cloud cover. So our game plan now is since we've seen a couple real big fish, 10, 15 pounders in this little pocket, right out from this rock, we're going to kind of make a few fan casts right out in this area because we've already made a pass through here, caught a couple, spotted a couple more. Came right out of the. I saw him at the last minute before he came out of here. He's a nice one. Well, that's a nice one, Brent. Yeah, sure is. A really nice fish. Hey, now, what do you think of that? Visual action, giant 30, 40, 50-inch pike laying on the bottom in a foot of water, throwing right in front of them and catching them visually on camera. We're going to hunt for big trophy fish today, so you stay tuned. On the border between the Northwest Territories of Canada and the newly formed territories of the Nunavut Territories lies Lake Casbah, a pristine lake of over 500,000 acres. It's a beautiful body of crystal clear water teeming with lake trout, pike, and arctic grayling. Lake Casbah Lodge lies mid-lake on a wooded hillside overlooking hundreds of islands and pristine coves. It's incredible to have a full-service lodge this far north for a fly-in situation. My guide, Brent Garland, and I are today hunting the famous Esox Nigra, or pike. We're sight fishing for these aggressive predators, hoping the action will unfold right in front of our cameras in the shallow, clear waters of this remote wilderness lake. Right here. Oh. oh, he's got it. He's got it. Big old fish. That was such a cool deal. That was such a cool deal. Brent spotted it. That's such a cool deal. I flipped that dag on. Flip that pike. That was such a neat strike. And look at the size of him. He's a nice big one. That's so cool, Brent. That was the way to do it. Big old giant pike just laying there, and I just actually got all hung in the grass. Look at this huge pike. This is what it's all about, folks. Flipping for pike. Flipping for pike. This is the fun deal, boy. I'll tell you what, this is all right. This is a fun deal. That's a good size pike, too, boys. Let's see if you can't get that one, Brent. That's the boga grip. That's got him. Boy, that's a big pike, too. That's a nice one. Just kind of hold it up and let the audience oh, see that one. That's a nice one. Got kind of an operation here trying to get that spinnerbait out. That's a nice pike. How big is that one, Brent? Uh, looks about 15. Oh, boy. That's a nice, decent fish. But the main thing was that but that fish was so incredible was that was a sight fish. That was just, we just saw him laying there. And when, when I finally, it was hard to see. I couldn't see it as well as Brent could. And I just threw past it and I actually got it hung in the weeds, jerked it a couple times and boy, he just exploded on it like a bass with a jig. I don't know that this spinnerbait's a big deal. I think they'll hit about anything like that. I, I'm just throwing a spinnerbait now because that's what I was throwing. I, I've been categorized as possibly a bass fisherman, but I don't know. I have so much fun fishing for other species of fish like tarpon, and, and in this case, spotting fish, sight fishing for, in this case, pike, uh, lake trout, grayling. I mean, I really enjoy all types of fishing, and, uh, but particularly enjoy sight fishing. So I'm just not a bass fisherman. I'm a lot more than that. A big fish, too. It Where? should be about 1 o'clock now. I see him right there. Oh, he's got it. He's got it. Oh, yeah. I threw right to him. I threw right to him. Another another visual action. Just make a little flip cast of that pike, and boy, he hit it like right now. Just, just, just as soon as it hit the water, he was just cruising along. Hard to see, a little bit of cloud cover. I just took that spinnerbait and made a little underhanded pitch to it, and boy, did he ever unload on it. The second it hit the water, he came and got it. Yeah. That's a good fish. That's a good pike. Another big giant one. A lot of these visual fish are just big. These aren't little fish. These are big pike. trophy pike. A really good fish. That's a nice smooth drag, and it really helps to have a smooth drag like I have on this reel. Really helping out. Really fine. 
You are right about the Polaroids, though. They oh, sure the Polaroid come in glasses. Hand. These are these are the best ever. Are these Polaroid glasses? I can see these fish so well. It's just unbelievable. That's what it takes. And I like these particular Polaroid glasses because they have a an amber tone to them. And I really think this amber, for me, is the most superior for this color water. Now, possibly in the uh, clear ocean waters, maybe some blues might, might be better. But for this particular slight tan color, this vermilion kind of color that I have now, kind of a tan color, really shows these fish up good. OK. He's a good one. Well, we spotted two big ones here. Just takes a little bit of effort to, because the water's a little roily and it's a little bit cloudy. Got to get just used to the shape that you're looking for. But this is what it's all about, trying to spot these fish visually. And we're doing it on big 15, 20 pound fish. And that's what it takes. These are not small. These are big, giant fish. Huge fish in every sense. Mm. If you'll be released to be caught again another day. Nice and broad. He's really, he really has some thick, he's really a thick, a really thick pike. You know, a lot of people uh, think of northern pike. Well, there is really no such species of northern pike. It's a pike. It's the same pike in Europe and Sweden and, and Norway, but it's also here in the United States and no better place is that this half million acre uh, Casbah Lake. It's, it's actually full. It's probably probably the second most pr uh, prevalent fish. The first mo pr most prevalent fish is the lake trout. There's more lake trout than anything. But then secondly, in all the bays and shallow water areas and the warmer water areas, there's just a lot of big pike. And I'm talking about 5 to 25 pound pike. One of the trophy areas of the world. See, look at him in the, in the trough here. Look at him. Look at him. Here's one coming up at him. He got it. He's 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 got it. Beautiful, beautiful lake trout all over the place. Okay. Beautiful lake trout. Okay. Hitting the fly. There's a big one down there, too, boys. Big, big lake trout. This is a small one. But they're hitting the fly really good. Let's see. Once you just, if you can, get this one. I'm, I see another bigger one out there if we can kind of release it somehow. That was such visual action, Brent, to see that trout come up on that fly. You could actually just see the spot the fish before he ever hit. I don't know if he's not real big, but there's a bigger one, a couple bigger ones out there. Kind of hard to get them. Just kind of pick them up best you can. Yeah, look at that. Is he hooked in? Yeah. He came after that fly now. That is so exciting. Okay, he's gonna he's gonna drop it. There we go. There we go. He's going right away now. But do you see any more, Brent? Where are they? Hey, it's an inter interesting observation here, folks. There's insect larvae all over the water. Little cases of insects. They look like uh, mayflies or caddisflies. There's there's hundreds of them all over the place. And it just emphasizes another point that to, to try to I try to be observant wherever I am. And today, I was very observant in finding, we found some, some, some bait fish. In fact, Brent knew, knew that there was bait fish there, and an old adage being that you find the bait, you find the fish. We were really looking for pike, but we stumbled upon a great big find of lake trout back in this little creek. There was a little bit of water uh, current coming out and just thousands of bait minnows. And we got in there, and there were lake trout by the hundreds. And what visual action that was, throwing flies and even spinner baits and jigs, everything. Those lake trout went crazy, but be observant. There, beautiful lake trout, beautiful lake trout. Just hitting a little streamer fly. That is, that is the ultimate. That is the ultimate. That is so cool. Well, Brent, these fish will always be in these little back bays and in a lot of places, right? Where you could catch them like this? Yeah, there seems to be their, their food source seems to be back here in the shallower water. And uh, uh -huh. very seldom some of these fish ever go deep. I'm gonna come around this side and land them over this way. A little bit better light. Okay. Okay, Brent. That's a nice one. Oh. 
beautiful lake trout on a fly. Who ever said that they were deep water fish? <laughs> Here in Lake Cosbo, they're up in two feet of water as well. That is really good. Okay, well that's a nice one. That was so neat. That fish was really close, and, and actually I just stripped the, the fly right into where the, uh, the whole leader was in the rod tip. And that's how close he hit to the boat, just right to nothing. Wow. It's nice to sight fish. Oh, it's great sight fishing. This is so much fun. Yeah, that's a lake trout right here. Strip it in. Here's one coming right out. He's coming after it, he's coming after it, he's coming after it. Coming after. He's got it. He's got it. I got him. I got him. I got him. I got him. Son. Hey, did you see that? I saw him. He was right really close. That was really a neat shot. He was right by the boat. What a neat shot that was. Nice big five pound lake trout. Did you see what I did? Brent, I, I threw it right by him. And he turned on it and followed it up another three or four feet. That was really cool. About eight or ten pounds. Just We're in beautiful feet of fish. water here rolling. Oh, I know. It's gorgeous. This is just gorgeous. This is what it's all about. This is fly rod fishing at its best. Visual fish with not only the big pike, but the big lake trout are just really something. Light tackle stuff. You know, as a bass fisherman, all you really need for all these fish up here, whether it's a trout or whether it's a big pike, is just good bass equipment. Look at him. Hit a streamer fly. Hit my... Number one Everglades fly. That's cool. Okay. Well, he's pretty stout. Fly rod fish. I've caught about 20 daggone fish today, just in about an hour or so, just spotting these things. The first couple we caught on jigs, and then I picked up the fly rod, and boy, not all of them hit. Some of them kind of spooked a little bit, but a lot of these lake trout hit the fly. Really, really good. Really nice fish. Okay, now he's got he's got it now. Okay, okay, Brandon. Looks like you have him under control now. Another good one. Well, we're going to show you a really a clever way of of cooking fish in just a minute. They wrap these in uh, in tin foil or aluminum foil and bake them with uh, <clears throat> with the pine that you see, and it's, it's incredible. It's just incredible. Okay, there we go. We're gonna keep him? Might as well. Okay, okay, we're gonna keep him. Oh, well, we were gonna keep him. We'll have to catch another one. Okay, <laughs> okay let's try another one. Let me ask you a question. I know that we're somewhere in the Northwest Territories, but just exactly where are we? Well, if you come up right through the provinces of Saskatchewan and Manitoba, straight up the border between them, you'd hit Casbah Lake in the Northwest Territories. Last year in April, uh, there's a new territory formed here just a little east of us called Nunavut, which borders the east side of Casbah Lake. Now, this is a half a million acre re lake. It's not a reservoir, of course. I think of reservoirs from uh, my experience in the south. But, of course, here in Canada, 99% of their waters are not reservoirs. They're natural lakes. And this lake, being a half a million acres, just... Uh, how, what's the rough dimension of the, of the lake? Uh, it's about 40 miles by 20. There's three major big islands, uh, quite a few smaller islands out in the uh, main lake. Uh, there's four or five rivers that come into the, the lake, and there's only one that goes out, and it's the Kazan River. That is a good grayling spot, and uh, that river continues on and ends up in uh, Hudson Bay. Okay. I'll start the boat up there rolling, and we'll go back over there, and we'll come back across into the shallow again. Okay. That's a good fat one. That's a That's a big, heavy, heavy-sided pipe there. Okay, this is shown to lift, lift them up and show them. Yeah, that's good. Let's just go try to spot another one. Okay, we were spotting them, and I saw them against that, that kind of light rock right here. Ah, have a good one. It might be a 20-pounder. It's a nice big, about a 14 or 15 pound fish. 
and I was throwing it out there in the center of this creek, and I could see the, the wake as it came up. That is a sizable pike. That's why we came up here. Now, the CASBA operation is really a pretty big operation. All these buildings, some 20 of them, were all flown in. All the heaters and all the materials and all the wood and roofs, this was a product of flying them in. You come down and look at all the boats, some 30 boats, all flown in again. Nice big 40 horsepower, four stroke engines, 18 uh, foot, real high sided safe boats. Now that's the main reason why I don't have my big Triton boat here because the nearest road is some 200 miles away. Now looking down here at the float plane operation, we use the float plane to fly to the outpost camps. There's three outpost camps as well as the uh, Kazan River has full of grayling trout and even some big pike. So this is a daily operation with this float plane. That's a big fish. He's not fighting very much. He's in the weeds. Huh? He's tangled a bit. This is a de Havilland beaver. And this is the workhorse of the Casbah Lodge. This is to service all the outpost camps and also to service the anglers that want to go to the, Cas uh, the Kassan River. Now, it's, a, it's about a 20-year-old plane, but it's, it's worth like a half a million dollars. These are just incredible workhorse uh, aircraft, and they have a big, big payload and they fly at a low speed so that there's, there's their safe plane. They can land easily on almost any water. And their slow takeoff and landing as well as a short takeoff and landing. So what a plane. Hmm. Where's the nice one? Nice big fat one. This size of him. Yes, sir. Now he's fighting good. Hmm. That's about that's about a big one though. It's about a big one. Son of a gun, he's about a big one. Got a good big head on him. Hmm. How big is he? Hmm. It's pretty broad in the back there. He's over 15. Oh yeah. Definitely over 15. I want to tell you, this has been, been quite a day. We really caught some nice fish today. Really some nice big pike. I'll tell you, folks, if you want to come and catch some really visual, fun fish, not only a big giant pike like this, but great lake trout, grayling, Casba Lodge up here in the Northwest Territories is the place to go. I mean, these are, these are quality fish, and it's just a lot of fun. It's a long ways to go, and I wish I had my bass boat, but it's a great trip. See you again next week.